Welcome. When the Bible was first put together, there were no chapters or verses. And then finally, a guy named Stephen or Stephen Langton in 1227 AD, about 1200 years after Christ, he decided to divide them up into chapters. If you can see in this book right here, there's these big numbers. You see that? Those are chapters, 126, 127 or whatever, various chapters in it. And the verses came later. Later, The first Bible that was put together with those chapters was about 182 years later, I believe. It was called the Wycliffe Bible. And so it's kind of cool. The problem is, as good as he did it, and he did a really great job, there's a lot of places that I think he put the chapter number in the wrong place. He shouldn't have divided it. Like chapter 19 of Matthew, which we just studied and we reviewed in our last videos. And chapter 20, 20 right there shouldn't be divided. I kind of know why he did it, because otherwise the chapters get really long. But it, they really should be combined and connected. If you remember, Jesus said, the first shall be last and the sh last shall be first. He said that. Well, the next story that he said was exactly that, an illustration of that. So they really should be combined. And this is a really cool parable. Remember what a parable is, is where Jesus kind of tells a story, something that they were all familiar with. They really understood this. And what he decided to do is tell a story about the kingdom of heaven, of course, uh, is like a landowner, a householder, who decides, you know, has a bunch of land, that he's going to go hire a bunch of laborers. And by the way, what he does here is exactly what was happening in the time of Jesus. A guy would go out and he would look for hired help, and he would hire a lot of people just for one day. That happens nowadays, not too often. Usually a person has a job and they go every day to the same job. Well, sometimes you have workers who don't have a job and they just go to a particular spot and then people come and say, hey, I'll hire you for this. And they work for that day and they might not see them again. So Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning. And so I'm going to, divide, I'm going to show you this sort of my little picture. I love drawing stick figures because I can't draw hardly at all. And so he just starts describing what the kingdom of heaven is like. So here's the landowner, the guy who owns, particularly he owns a vineyard. And so he decides to go hire different people. And pretending this is a clock, he said, it says, Jesus said he went out earlier in the morning, probably 4.35, 5.36. So I happen to decide 6 o'clock right here. That's kind of when the day, the Jewish day starts. Okay, so here's a bunch of people and he went out and he decides to give them a day's wages. Now, the coin, which I don't have that particular coin, but we'll pretend this is the coin right here. The coin is a denarius. It's kind of like just one day's wage. Um, so he decides to give them a coin. He agrees. He says, hey, you want to work for this, you know, a denarius? And they say, yeah, that'd be great. He puts food on their table. He gives them one day wages, a salary for that day. So early in the morning, these guys went out and they started working in his vineyard early in the morning. Then he went out. He decided to add some more workers. And it was the at nine o'clock in the morning, three hours later or so, which is called the third hour in the day. That's how the Jewish people reckoned it. At nine o'clock in the morning, that's three hours later, third hour, uh, he hired some more laborers. So they went out at nine o'clock in the morning. And that's usually where most jobs start anyway. Some start earlier, some start later. And then he went out the sixth hour and the ninth hour, Jesus said. So he kept hiring people. He said, you know what? Uh, I think I'll go hire some more. He saw a lot of fruit, maybe, the farmer, this landowner. Let's say this is this guy. He saw a lot of uh, food that he can start collecting, you know, or, you know, to labor and get that food. He decided, I got to get more people. He had a pretty big land, you know, to work. He couldn't do it by himself. <clears throat> Plus, it's good to have a person who owns stuff and, you know, has riches and kind of a landowner uh, because it provides work. 
and employment for other people. So he did it the third hour, the, well, early in the morning, the third hour, the sixth hour, the ninth hour, at three o'clock in the afternoon, he was still looking for people. And there were some people in that spot, like in the marketplace or something, who were just, you know, standing around or waiting for another job. Well, finally, he said, you know, I'm going to do it again on the 11th hour, because it's, you know, 12 hours is six to six. On the 11th hour at five o'clock in the afternoon, he decided, well, maybe there's some extra hands, you know, some extra people that I can go hire. So he goes and he finds a group of people right here. He finds a group who is still not working. And he says, why are you standing around idle? You're doing nothing. Why aren't you working? Well, they said nobody came to hire us. They were waiting for a job. They needed money as much as they can. So he said, okay, uh, I'll go ahead and hire you. And then they work for one hour. In the meantime, in that time, at that day, and even nowadays, it was pretty hot. Um, it, it could be hot because of the sun or hot because of a hot wind, a dry, scorching wind or something. And so keep that in mind for the story. And by the way, he said these guys, he, he told them, you know, I'll give you what's right. I'll just give you what's right. And he said, I'll do what, I'll give you what's right. And so at the end of the day, he took his... Um, foreman let's say we'll call him foreman or his key servant here which i don't have pictured here he took a guy um who he is his right hand man i suppose and he says okay go pay him go pay all the uh workers you know what they were going to get and that was in the evening the owner of the vineyard said to his oh yeah it says foreman here in this translation call the workers and pay their wages beginning with the last ones hired and going out to the first. So he took the last ones, the five o'clock workers. Here, he gave them money. Do you have any idea what he gave them? You want to guess? <laughs> the workers who were hired about the 11th hour came and received a denarius. Remember this? Received a day's wages uh, for their work. So that's interesting. They got a denarius. And then... Um, those who came, who were hired first, remember early in the morning, uh, they expected to receive more. Said, hey, they got, they worked for an hour. We worked all day, hot, sweaty. You know, they worked for 12 hours, basically. And, uh, and they expected to get more. But each of them also received a, denar a denarius. Whoa. They each got whoever, whatever hour they worked, equal pay. Hmm. When they received it, they began to like grumble and complain against the landowner. You know why, right? Uh, these men who were hired last worked only one hour. This is what they're saying to the landowner. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. All that work, we worked all that time. But he answered them. Now, I like, I love the answer of this guy. It's really right. You know, it seems it isn't right. We'll talk about it. Friend. He said, he said to one of the guys, he said for him, um, I am not being unfair to you. No, you may feel like it is. I, I may feel like it is. But he said, no, I'm not being unfair. Didn't you agree to work for one denarius? That's what they decided to do. They, they decided, yeah, I'll work for the denarius. Remember, I said that in the beginning of the story. Take your pay and go. I, I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. He decides, I want to do that. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? That's true. He has a right to pay what he wants, do what he wants. You may go, but Gordon, it's unfair. Well, let's see. Or are you envious because I am generous? Ah, see this landowner, this guy at the top corner right here, this guy right here is a really, really good guy. You know, he was actually fair. If you think about it, he, he agreed to give that money to them. And he decided, you know, I'm going to be generous to these guys. Maybe he was like looking at these guys and said, wow, they've been out here all day waiting for work. I feel bad for him. But he decided, you know, I'm generous. So I'm going to give them my money. So he gave it to him. Then he said, um, so the last shall be first and the first will be last. He repeats that again. Hmm. It's a very interesting, awesome story. Now, I would like to... T take a stab at it, try and take a, a guess on what Jesus is saying here. I think what God is saying to us is that he gives grace to 
anybody who comes to him. And they all came to him. They all worked in his uh, field. By the way, it's a lesson in that. God doesn't want us to be lazy. He wants everybody who is part of his team to work. Work in his labor, in his field. Work in, a, in the vineyard. And the vineyard is the world. <laughs> the world needs Christ. And so we need to go out there and try and help others, you know, find Jesus. But that's not the main point of the story. And remember, I told you in the past that a parable usually has one main point. What's the moral of the story? I think it's this. One, that God is a gracious, loving, compassionate God. And even those who come out at the last moment to Christ, you know, they get saved at the last moment. Think of the thief on the cross. What did he do to receive salvation? He just called on the name of the Lord and he's in paradise today. Where there's a lot of people who have worked all their lives. You know, the, the apostles end up working their whole lives. You know, the, the people who grow up in Christ, you as a child, maybe you've given your life to Jesus, you're going to serve Christ all your life. And then there's going to be some who come at the last moment, last minute. The Jewish people were God's people, and now the Gentiles at the last. The first shall be last, and last shall be first. The Gentiles also sort of came in last to the commonwealth of Christ, the, you know, the heritage of God, the, the work of God, the, the family of God. So um, I, I, I love this. Now, that doesn't mean he's not trying to teach us that you should wait till the last minute and then get saved. You don't know when you're going to die. It could be too late. You need to come right now. And you say, well, why should I? Because he's a loving, wonderful, heavenly father. And Jesus is a wonderful savior. And so I am in debt to God, by the way. Of course, I can't pay that debt. Jesus Christ paid it. This is a point. It's grace that you're saved. It's not by works. Remember the rich man? I think this is all tied together. Remember the rich man, the young rich man? who said, look, I've done all the commandments since I was my youth. See, from a young age, he was working for God. He was living right, so he thought. Of course, his heart was wrong, if you remember that story. His heart had an idol worshiper. He loved money. He wanted money. <laughs> you know, he was too much into money instead of really loving God. But the fact is, there are some kids, hopefully you, who will grow up serving Jesus Christ all your life. And there's others who might get saved. Maybe they don't know the message and they didn't get the opportunity. Those guys in that story did not get the opportunity until the last minute. Now, I don't think they were in the beginning and said, I'll just sit back and wait. And, you know, he's going to come back. No, 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 you don't wait. You give your life to Christ and serve him. He's worth it. Why do you, why do you say he's worth it? Because look at type, the type of heart he has. God is a generous, wonderful Lord. And you can't get saved by your works. This is not a story about works or labor that gets you earnings. It's not in the sense of wages, earnings for salvation. I think what he's saying overall, if you take a step back and you look at the big picture, it's that the kingdom of heaven is one of generosity and kindness and goodness. And that everybody should be working for God. I mean, he's working for us all the time. He gives us food. He gives us life. He gives us breath, everything else. He gives us peace and friends and family and oh, he's blessed us like crazy health. We should work for him completely. I'm in debt for him, especially knowing the debt that Jesus Christ paid on the cross. And Jesus is hinting right here and now, before he dies and before he goes up to heaven, he's telling everybody the kingdom of God is open to all, even to the last minute. He didn't have to go back out probably and hire some more. And that God is always looking for more to hire in a sense of, more to get into his field, more to get into the place where God can bless them. And those guys are blessed. All of them got blessed. And there's an equal salvation for everyone. He's not showing favoritism. That's cool. So if you think about the rich man and he thought he earned it, he thought he was so right. Wrong. <laughs> and then the apostles said, hey, we've given up everything and we're sacrificing everything. And and all that, you know, what are we going to get? He said, you know, your names are going to be in a high place and all that. But he also said, everybody's going to be blessed. You know, if you remember what he said, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And he talks about the kingdom of heaven. And he's trying to teach us this thing about God is grace, grace, grace. It is not works. It's not merit. It's not earnings. Even though he used the earnings kind of a picture because they understood earnings and all the picture of 
you know, money that, you know, that he's going to give. It, it, it's not like, I think what he's saying is salvation is one that I give to you and you should, does, you should want it. And I've just given it to you. I'll allow you to permit you to work for it. But it's not like you're really earning something. You can't earn your way into heaven. And Jesus Christ is always already at this point in this parable, introducing the fact that everything that God has is for everybody, no matter when you come to him. So whether you're young or you're old watching this video, come to Christ, give your life to him. And if you are young, go serve him. He sure is worth it. He's generous and it's a salvation of goodness and free grace, unmerited, unearned, unworked for, undeserved love and favor of God. Hope you got that. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. And so maybe the last people that come into Christ, he's going to bless them and reward them and bring them up first. Now, that's not to say, by the way, there's other scripture like 1 Corinthians 3 and other places, especially that one, talks about rewards. So even though we get saved, everybody gets saved no matter when we come in, and we get the blessing of being in his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is like, he also does reward those. If you really work really hard, there's another set of understanding where God does reward those for the work and the labor that they actually do. I hope you get that. I hope it's not confusing. God bless you. I love you. And keep coming back to these videos. Learn more and more. Amen.